Hello everyone, it is Ashwin Rao. Today's video features a closer look at one of my favorite, if not favorite, bootmaker hailing from mainland China. He's really made a name for himself and his family in boot making. And this is a boot by Flame Panda. Flame Panda is fronted by Peng. I'm not sure if anybody knows Peng's last name, some might. But um, they burst onto the scene a couple of years ago. After they initially emerged, I actually reached out probably about two and a half years ago with an interest in this beautiful mock toe boot pattern. They have become known for a wide range of styles, including their service boots, some of their monkey and lace to toe boots. But I think it's their mock toe boot that really holds and captures the zeitgeist and imagination of most booth enthusiasts. It's his best known style. You can see that this is a beautiful makeup, kind of reminiscent of most mock toe boots. Um, you can see that this boot has a hand sewn apron. This is not a pie crust apron. This is just a hand sewn apron where the leather is lifted and stitched together in two rows. Um, but this is done by hand. You can see a beautiful construction of the welt double row stitch. I believe this is Velchuan construction. Um, you can see contrast stitching on the upper. A total of five eyelets and three speed hooks. You can see a beautiful, elegant job combining the side paneling, combining the side paneling with the back heel stay, which is one single stripe of leather. Beautiful stitching done across the collar. The upper part of leather is folded over to create essentially like a piping effect, which adds to the comfort of wearing the shoes. Um, I chose to update the lacing here with braided laces from, these are 120 centimeter braided laces from Mason and Smith. So if you are really interested in shoe accessorization or high quality shoe shines give, Mason and Smith a look because they really have some amazing products, including great shoe care products, polishing rags, brushes, other various shoe care options, and some really cool laces as well. Um, huge fan. Um, in order to care for this shoe, which I've worn about 30 to 40 times, I used a pure polish product, burgundy cream polish. That's all I used was some burgundy cream polish. You can see that label right there, burgundy cream, and by Pure Polish Products. Basically, this cream has a really beautiful luster to it and um, hides some of the scuff marks that you can kind of see if you're growing really up close pretty well. Um, and you can see how well this leather has taken up this cream polish. Um, I also used a water dispenser and a polishing rag to kind of buff the shoes and I used this vintage shoe buffing, shoe polish machine, which still is very operational, has a motor, a button, and two brushes. You can see that right there. The black brush provides a more robust buff, and this is providing a more light buff here, so you can get a higher shine that way. Um, but this is not a boot I necessarily want to put a high shine on. I really want to put a luster on it. It is a burgundy, almost color eight, Horse stripe leather is what I believe it's called. It's essentially a horse hide. Um, and you can see that over 30 wears, there's very little creasing or wear. You can see a little bit of loose grain or whatever you would want to call that patterning. But even on the top of the vamp, very little creasing. So this is a boot that was incredibly well, um, it was incredibly well cut in terms of the leather. It's well clicked is a good way to put it. Um, this is a hand-lasted boot, hand-stitched outsoles, hand-welted with hand-stitching done on the apron, and I believe machine-stitching done for the rest of the stitching. You can see how clean the stitch work is as you kind of go in and how beautiful the pattern of the shoe is. Keep in mind, this is a two-year-old shoe, and I do try to take care of my shoes. Um, you can see that I've done a little polish to the edge dressing to give it another luster. Beautiful rugged block heel on a Dr. Soul rock hoard full sole. It's a super grip. Very well assembled boot. Definitely worthy of your attention. 
Peng and Flame Panda, I would say are amongst the best boot makers in the world. And if you had to sort of force my hand as to describe or discuss who the best boot makers currently are in operation in 2022, from my experience, Flame Panda is right there with Underhood, Midas Bootmaker, and then a small other handful of bootmakers from Indonesia, including Tahura Boots, um, really have elevated their game. I do not have familiarity with some of the Japanese bootmakers, such as White Cloud or um, Clinch, who I have, or John Lofgren for that matter. But to me, I do have experience with um, Viberg and other similar American-based makers who do have manufacturing in China. And I think that these boots surpass those in quality. Other boots to really consider if you're thinking about high quality boots are Iron Boots, XBXS Boots Factory, which uses more of a machine welted process and has really burst onto the scene. I've seen some really cool things from Quan Shoemaker. So very interesting, rugged boot making scene that has emerged but there's so many other boot makers out there. Um, you can get a great deal from these guys who are building at a much higher quality than some of the more traditional workwear style boots. And these are boots that you will have a pride of ownership in and you will enjoy for the rest of your life because they are designed to last a lifetime. Um, I don't think you'd ever be disappointed by Flame Panda. The only issues that I have with Flame Panda is that it takes upwards of a year or more to receive your boots upon placing in an order. I actually have an order in place now that will probably have taken about 15 months before I receive it. That being said, if you're confident in your boot choices and are more of an established boot enthusiast, I think you probably have a pretty good idea of what you might be interested in. And Flame Panda would be a great boot maker along with some of the others I've mentioned to reach out to. And that's not to disparage other amazing boot makers that I have uh, in my collection by any means, but I just wanted to say, hey, when I sit back and take a closer look, Flame Panda is amongst the very best, along with the other makers that I've mentioned in this video. So go to give them a look. You can find Flame Panda on Instagram. Their contact through WhatsApp and other features are, are available through Instagram, so that's the best way to be in touch. Sometimes it takes a while to get through to them, but at the end of the day, this is a small operation based in mainland, semi-rural China, and you're going to have to put up with some of the difficulties. I will say that Peng is a very philosophical human being who's very kind, and once you actually get a hold of him, is extremely generous and very well thought of in the boot community because of his thoughtfulness. So give Flame Panda a try. If you do so, tell Peng that I said hi and um, give me a shout out there. Um, I think that he is just a kind gentleman with incredible skill and craftsmanship within his family of bootmakers in China. And you're never going to be disappointed by a Flame Panda boot. The only other thing I will comment on is this is a hefty boot. This is not a boot that's light. This is a boot that's gonna kick your butt a little bit when you first try it on, because it has weight to it. Um, if you want a lighter boot, XBXS is a good option, as is iron boots. They tend to make a little less overbuilt boots, but these guys will let you know they're on your feet. And for many boot makers, they really like that vibe. So, Flame Panda guys, have a good one, bye.